In a stretch of games where the Suns have had the best defense in the NBA, speaking to the start of the four-game win streak and including the loss on Thursday to the Dallas Mavericks, uh, they've really been on time and on schedule and connected with their rotations and with their activity and playing in multiple efforts. But that wasn't necessarily the case on a consistent basis in Thursday's loss to the Mavericks. And I just wanted to go ahead and zoom in on some of the good as well as some of the bad just to speak on what's been going on on that end, uh, specifically pertaining to that game. So let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, this first play here is going to be it's with something that Monty Williams spoke to after the game, which was the bench having one of their worst performances of the season. They've been a staple and typically a positive, even amidst the injuries and the things like that that the entire roster has seen. The bench has been a, a general positive and then some. And of the positives was the way they were performing on the defensive end of the floor. At the very least, just being in tune with the game plan, knowing what the rotations in, uh, within whatever scheme they might be running is, and executing. And that wasn't the case on Thursday, and that was a microcosm of a lot that was going on that ended up determining uh, the outcome of that game. And this first player, we're going to see Damian Lee being called in. He's going to be the pigeon here for save, for um, Spencer Dinwiddie, excuse me. Uh, shout out David for that. Uh, just one of the best writers in general. If you haven't read it, checked out any of his work, I highly advise. Um, Damian Lee is going to be the pigeon here. And... Spencer Dinwiddie, as he brings him into the primary action to then get into what they really want to run, which is just a spread pick and roll, Damian Lee is going to elect to go under this screen, and Dinwiddie is going to easily stop and pop. This is being out of touch with the game plan, being out of touch with the specific opponent or matchup that you might have. Um, it doesn't matter if Spencer Dinwiddie just came off the bench and these are his first dribbles of the game. It doesn't matter if he's on a cold streak in the stretch of games or if he's on fire. Nowhere on the scouting report or nowhere in the game plan is there going to be you going under screens on Spencer Dinwiddie. That's what Damian Lee does here, and he ends up getting burned as the Suns essentially concede three points to the highest player on the floor at that moment in time. Again, a lot of the tactics that they that they plan to use against Doncic ended up being used unexpectedly against Spencer Dinwiddie because he was so hot, um, specifically in the second half. So they went to they went to putting two on the ball here. They do a good job funneling the action all the way to the sideline, using it as an extra defender between Paul and Aiden, make him pick up his dribble, and then a great job as well from Tory Craig and Mikael Bridges peeling over from the weak side, and positioning pre-rotating to entice the skip pass taking away the pass to the roll and taking away the one pass away to the spray man which would be tim hardaway jr at the top of the key in the opposite slot so they do a good job forcing this pass to be the skip pass it's off target and it takes a long time to get there which allows for them tory craig and mikhail bridges here to x out off of the tagger and they do a good job getting into their rotations and then mikhail does a good job of not getting too close out to a non-shooter and Josh Green ends up kicking it back around. And now they have Tim Hardaway Jr. trying to create late in the shot clock. So he's going to go pick and roll. He does a good job navigating around, getting the paint touch. And now we're going to see Cam Johnson, who's been on time and on schedule with great consistency and activity since he's got back into the rotation. He does a great job shooting out of here from his closeout and then passing him over to Torrey Craig. And then Chris Paul gets a deflection late that effectively forces a turnover and a shot clock violation for the Mavericks. All right, this next rep here, after the Suns do a great job containing the ball initially, good job from Torrey Craig with his defensive movement patterns. They're going to swing it back out, and then they're going to get into pick and roll. And we're going to see more two on the ball here. It's just Mikael Bridges this time with DeAndre Aiden. They do a good job of, of forcing Dinwiddie to the opposite sideline, using the sideline as an extra defender. And then Cam Johnson's in position to where Mikael was in the last play. However, he plays it more generously, splitting two on the, on the weak side and ends up allowing for this pass to get out to Tim Hardaway Jr. And that allows for him to play connector. I would like for Cam Johnson to be way more up the line here and entice the skip pass as Mikael Bridges did in the last rep because that allows for them to get into their rotations quicker. And it takes away the easy pass, which is what you want to do if you're going to be playing an aggressive style of defense. However, they do a great job of rotating out here to Craig. Rotates back out to his original man, runs him off the three-point line, and then does a great job with his defensive moving patterns again. Sliding his feet, containing the ball, staying connected, playing physical to the legal limit, and getting up a solid contest. They concede the offensive rebound, but they do a great job playing the multiple efforts here as Chris Paul rotates out to Josh Green with the activity and then forces a deflection off his leg and the Suns get a, get a takeaway. 
All right, and here we're going to see more reps with more bench players featured in the lineup that's on the floor for the Suns. So we're going to see here, it's going to be saving lead here on Spencer Dinwiddie. And as we kind of let it flow through a little bit more, a screen's going to come into the play. And he's going to oblige to go with the switch with Cam Johnson, which is perfectly fine. And then they're going to switch as well from Cam Johnson to Jack, Jock Landell, who's going to pass Dinwiddie off to him on the sideline. However, this is where they're going to get back into their switch and double. So they go switch and then double. Spencer Dinwiddie does a great job being a smart, high IQ player that he is. And also seeing where the nearest defender to the person he's going to pass the ball to is as Cam Johnson rotates over to put two on him. He does a great job of not just stopping here to make the pass because that's a quicker rotation for, for Johnson potentially, but especially for Dan Saban Lee to rotate off of from the opposite elbow. Dinwiddie does a great job noticing this and noticing that Lee is out of position, so he stretches out the double team a little further to make the real estate harder to, harder to eat up for the rotating defense off of his pass. So he does a great job with that, and that puts the Suns into more stress and more dynamic rotations as the ball is going to kick around the horn, and it's going to end up leading to a three here for Tim Hardaway Jr. What we need here is for Saban Lee. He does a good job eventually getting into it, but he's got a before before Spencer Dinwiddie even gets to that as he's dribbling to the opposite corner. He should already be rotating towards, towards Dorian Finney-Smith here, who's the spray man. And it's not closing the closing the distance on this pass. Saban Lee should already be rotating like right here. Once he sees Spencer Dinwiddie going to make this dribble, because Mikael Bridges can easily just step up, and then the pass is going to be impossible to make to Tim Hardaway Jr. over the length of Jock Landell, who's in the opposite corner. So this would have been better for Saban Lee to completely take away this pass. It's as obvious it's going there. It's harder to recognize this in real time, of course, but you just got to have the situational awareness to. Keep your team in an advantage point defensively, especially if you're conceding an advantage on the second side. You take away the easy pass out of that, then we're just either going to have to throw it off of someone's leg or put up a errant shot late in the shot clock here. They don't do that and they end up getting a three-point out of this for the for the Dallas Mavericks. All right, this next rep here, we're going to see more Saban Lee on Spencer Dinwiddie here. He's going to do a good job navigating over the initial, then he's going to navigate over this next one. They end up going with the switch here with Jock Landell off of the second part of the screen in action. And then they're going to go double. So good job from Saban Lee faking the double. See Spencer Dinwiddie take his foot off the gas a little bit. And then he goes back into uh, retreat dribble mode. And then he goes back to the middle of the floor relocating with the dribble. And now it's going to be the Dallas Mavericks playing with players that don't do a good job creating, having to create late in the shot clock. And that's going to be here, Dorian Finney-Smith trying to create against Jock Landell, who does a great job with his lateral mobility as well as playing playing physical and doing a good job with the contest here as well in the end. And the Suns get a stop on a great defensive possession. All right, and on this next one here, we're going to see there's going to be a switch here, and then there's going to be another one. And then they're going to end up getting into screen and roll on the sideline here between Cam Johnson and DeAndre Aiden, who are going to be putting two on the ball. So they're going to go ahead and put two on here. And this is where, again, you have to be more understanding of the spacing from the opposing team. There's no way that, that Spencer Dinwiddie is going to make this pass on the skip all the way to the opposite side of the floor to Finney Smith because Saban Lee is an athlete and he could definitely get over to take this pass away. However, we're going to force our attention more so to Ish Wainwright, who's on the opposite elbow here. He wants to be a lot closer to the roller here who is Dwight Powell. If he takes away this pass, the easy pass to the roller here, there's no other option for Spencer Dinwiddie to go to. And because he doesn't take away that pass or at least threaten the vicinity of it to force him to throw the skip pass, the ball gets to the middle third of the floor from Dwight Powell, who's good playing on a short roll as a playmaker, kicks it over to add to the advantage that's created off of the pass out of the double, and the Suns are going to get burned.